Hey friends, carrying on with this series. In this video, I'm covering how to work with color in Adobe InDesign. There exists a swatch panel and a color panel. I have never once used the color panel, so I'm suggesting that you use the swatches panel because I'm pretty sure everything you need is there. If you can't find the swatches panel, go to window, color, and then swatches. First, you have these two boxes which are layered over each other. The top left is your fill color. We'll choose one for now. To change the border, click the bottom right. Whichever icon is in front is how you know what you're changing. Now we can add a border. There is also this double arrow which swaps the two colors. Sometimes you accidentally add a fill when you want a border or vice versa. The options for the fill and border exist in two other places. At the top toolbar here, which is exactly the same as the swatches panel. And then it is also at the bottom of your main toolbar on the left. You do have to use the one in the main toolbar to change the color. You can do that by double clicking the box or border, whichever you're trying to adjust. And then the color picker modal will pop up. You have the big spectrum in the main square next to it. This slider shifts the hue of the spectrum from warm to cool colors. There really isn't a color that you can't find in here. This box over here shows your current color of your object below and then the new color wherever your cursor is at so you can compare. So now we can get to where you can input values. We first have HSB, which stands for Hue Saturation Brightness. I don't know who uses this, but it's there. Lab, I don't even, let's just skip that. Okay, now we have RGB and hex codes, which are your color spaces for digital, anything with a screen. RGB stands for red, green, blue, and then hex, which is short for hexadecimal color. The hex code has six digits, which is essentially a shorthand version of the RGB value. Last, we have CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key color, which is black. There's a button that says add swatch, which will add it to your swatches panel. It says either RGB or CMYK, depending on where your cursor last was, but don't worry, you can adjust this later in the swatches panel. I'll keep this in RGB for now to show you that in a bit. Let's click OK to change the color. Back to the swatches panel, all of your swatches are listed below. You have a preview of the color, the name of your swatch, and also an indicator if the swatch is in CMYK or RGB. You can change the swatch from this panel by double clicking. This brings up the swatch options modal. Under swatch name, there's a toggle to name it with a color value, or if you turn it off, you can change the name to whatever you want. I always use the color value, but you do you. The next dropdown has two options, process or spot. Process means it uses values to create the color, so that is CMYK, RGB, and hex codes. Spot is specifically for print design, which are pre-made inks and cannot be created through mixing colors from CMYK. In the color mode dropdown, you can change the color from CMYK or RGB or vice versa. You'll notice a divider line under RGB, which denotes all the libraries underneath it, which are for spot colors. Below are sliders. If you want to adjust the color, click OK to save your changes. For the list of swatches, there are two ways to add a new color swatch. The color must first be selected in some capacity. I'll select this pink box for now. The fill shows up in the top left of the panel. You can add the swatch by either clicking the plus sign in the bottom right, or click and hold the color and drag it down into your list. You are able to duplicate swatches in here. Where this is helpful is if you are creating multiple swatches with a similar base color. There are a couple ways you can do this. The first is to right click, which is control click, and then choose duplicate swatch. The default is for it to go to the bottom. If you want to organize the swatches, you can drag them up or down. We can just double click and then adjust the color. For this, the original box is yellow. Let's look at a warm swatch with an additional 20% magenta. The other way to duplicate is to drag the swatch down to the plus sign. Let's change this and look at a cool version of the swatch, which is 20% cyan. That's a little too green. I'll change it to 10% cyan. Notice that the box automatically changed. If you're working on documents with multiple pages and you're using a color throughout, using the swatches panel will save you a lot of time. 
Here's a page. I have blue throughout and we need to change the color to a teal. You could sit and change the color for each element, but the most efficient way is to use the same swatch as you work. I'll click through a couple of these so you can see that they all use the same swatch. Even if I have nothing selected, all I have to do is double click, adjust the swatch, and everything will change accordingly. Moving on, you can change the color of the box or text, which is the square icon here, or the T icon next to it. The default is to have the box selected. If you're inside of a text box, it will automatically change to the T. For changing the color of the text, you can change the color of specific words by highlighting or the entire thing. When working with text, both the fill and border apply. Here's some text, we can change the fill and we can add or change the border. While we're here, you can change the weight of your border in the top toolbar over here. You can choose one of the presets or input your own value. This feature also exists in the stroke panel at the top. Next to the box and text options, there is a field where you can control the tint of a swatch, which means it will only go lighter, never darker. For context, here is 100% magenta and will create a swatch at 50% and another at 20%. These two new boxes that I created are using the same swatch, but different percentages, which is denoted in the swatch name. Don't be confused about this. It would be the same if you created a swatch with 50 magenta and 25 magenta. I just find this to be faster. The last icons in this panel, the first one is swatch views and the one next to it is color groups. You probably don't need to worry about these unless you're working on a large team and sharing files. There is also a trash icon if you want to delete any swatches. One thing that I do usually at the end of a project is clean up my swatches panel by deleting any unused swatches. You can do that by right clicking on any swatch, go to select all unused, and we can drag all of these to the trash can. I don't think there's anything in the dropdown except some other view options. You know how to create swatches, edit them, add them, duplicate, and delete them. Here I have two logos for Target and Macy's. They both use red in their branding. If you're working on a pitch for either of them, you can't use the wrong red because they're going to know. To get as close to their brand color as possible, you can use the eyedropper tool. The shortcut is I and just click. It'll turn the box to the color you just eyedropped. I'll do this for Macy's as well. If I put them on top of each other, you can see the difference in the reds. When you're working with the eyedropper tool, it can only sample from objects on your document or pasteboard. For example, you wouldn't be able to eyedrop the gray in the background or the color of your margin. You would have to screen grab it, place it in your document, and then eyedrop the screen grab. Okay, to reiterate some things we went over earlier, you can add these to our list of swatches by dragging the color down from the icon in the top left, or just click the plus sign in the bottom right. To rename them, double click the swatch, toggle off, name with color value, and label it. This one is target red. I'll convert this to CMYK, and then do the same thing for Macy's. In the dropdown, these are your blend modes. I rarely use these, but it's an option for those of you that use them from Illustrator and Photoshop. The main thing I wanted to show you was the use of opacity, which is different from using the percentage of tint that we did earlier. The first box is a 50% swatch of magenta, and the second box is full magenta. If you change the opacity to 50%, they look visibly different. The main difference is that the one with opacity is transparent. Let's go back to the full magenta, but this time I have a stroke with it. If you change the opacity in the slider, it will apply to the entire object, but you may want to change the opacity independently for the fill or the stroke. Here I have an image with two boxes of text. To change the opacity of the stroke, double click where it says stroke in the effects panel and the effects modal will pop up. You can change the opacity here. Okay, it's really hard to isolate one feature in InDesign because they all work together. You can see there's this overlap with the stroke. That's because it's aligned to the center of the border. For this styling, I want it fully on the outside. We can change that by going to the stroke panel and then change where it says align stroke. The options are center, inside, or outside. So I'll choose outside and that's how you would change that. For the fill, we can change in the same way, but instead double clicking fill and setting our opacity there.
This is gonna depend on your design style, but some of you may want to create gradients. The gradient feature in InDesign is limited, but you can do some things. Here are some gradients. They're images, but we can create them manually in InDesign. To create a gradient, go to Window, Color, Gradient. To add a gradient to the box, just click anywhere on the slider. In this panel, there's a preview of the gradient in the top left, as well as the slider below. Right now, it's going from white to black. To change the color of the dials, click a dial and then eye drop the color you want. I'll do that with the other dial and that creates a gradient. This diamond icon in the middle here allows you to shift the gradient distribution like this. For the other one, there are more colors going on. To start, I'll create a gradient from the top left color and then the other dial from the bottom right. You can add additional colors by clicking just below the slider in between the other two dials. This will default to the color directly above. I'll eye drop this to the center color of our image and we're pretty close. If you wanna change the angle, you can use the gradient tool in the main toolbar. The shortcut is G. Click where you want the gradient to start and then drag where you want it to end. These are linear gradients. You can also use radial gradients if you need. Going back to the swatches panel, you can add gradients to your swatch list. That is working with color. The next video in this series, I will cover the pages panel.